Meanwhile, this President Biden still facing criticism from several top Republican lawmakers after vowing to only consider a black woman to nominate to fill the upcoming vacancy on the Supreme Court. The backlash comes as a recent ABC Ipsos poll finds a majority. Seventy six percent of voters think the president should consider all nominees, regardless of gender and race. The new data comes as President Biden met with Senators Dick Durbin and Chuck Grassley of the Senate Judiciary Committee to speak with them about possible nominees for the seat being vacated by retiring Justice Stephen Breyer. Joining us now to discuss is the executive director at New Civil Liberties Alliance, Mark Chenoweth. Mark, thanks for coming on today. We mentioned some top Republican lawmakers. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz is one of them who's criticizing the president's own criteria for choosing the next Supreme Court justice. Let's take a listen. The Democrats are so casually racist that, that they'll make that promise, and not only that, it ends up being insulting to African-American women. There are, there are black women who are very talented jurists who may well be, be the appropriate nominee, but when, when Biden starts out by saying he has a quota system, he diminishes the achievements of those African-American women. And it was a campaign promise from Joe Biden. Appears he will follow through with that promise What do you make of how this is all played out? Well, I think Senator Cruz has a point that when you anytime you narrow the field in the way that President Biden has decided uh, to do, you're creating the the possibility or I certainly worry that you're creating the possibility of a perception that the individual you choose at the end of the day wasn't the single most qualified uh, individual that you could have selected. Mm. Um, What's interesting is people are looking back in time, and I'll take you back to 2005, actually, uh, where the president I remember it well. I was at the Department of Justice. Okay, great. You can weigh in on this. I'll set this up for our viewers. Um, The president being accused of hypocrisy after he filibustered the nomination of Janice Rogers Brown for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia twice before she was finally approved in 2005 after a two-year fight. The former Supreme uh, California Supreme Court Justice, Judge Brown, was nominated by President George W. Bush and was seen as a potential Supreme Court pick for the 2005 opening, ultimately filled by Justice Samuel Alito. Uh, Weigh in on that, Mark, if you could, and the fact that maybe some people have forgotten this happened. Well, Judge Brown would have been terrific. Uh, I know Judge Brown well. She's actually the chairman of our board of advisors at the New Civil Liberties uh, Alliance. And I remember uh, I was at the Office of Legal Policy when she was nominated. Uh, I remember uh, helping out with the vet, uh, vetting the background of uh, of then Justice Brown because she was on the California Supreme Court. And she has an amazing biography and background and is an extremely talented uh, jurist. And yet uh, at that time, Senator Biden felt uh, incumbent upon him to, to, as you say, to filibuster her uh, selection uh, to the D.C. Circuit, the second highest court, as some people call it. And not just her, but also Miguel Estrada. And emails came out that revealed the fact that the reason that Senator Biden did this and that other senators did this was because of their race. They didn't want President Bush to have the opportunity to appoint the first Hispanic male or the first African-American female uh, to the U.S. Supreme Court. So they thought if they could keep those folks from getting elevated to the the court right below that, then they could keep that from happening. So when you start playing by race the way that Senator Biden uh, was doing and now President Biden is doing, that cuts both ways. Sometimes it might cut in favor of a candidate and sometimes it might cut against a candidate Either way, I think that's an unacceptable way to, to choose our jurists. Really interesting context uh, you sh- shared with us here. Again, the name uh, Judge Michelle Childs of the uh, South Carolina U.S. District Court being floated uh, right now as a possible pick. Perhaps she could garner some bipartisan support. Uh, and there's a list on your screen as well. Again, some possible picks, although the president has made it clear he's looking for a uh, female uh, black judge. So we'll be watching to see who gets the final nomination. Mark Chenoweth joining us on the program. Mark, thank you so much. We appreciate the conversation. Good to be with you. Thanks. Well, coming up, a new study revealing whether or not lockdowns had an impact in reducing COVID-19 deaths and the findings may surprise you. We'll have a doctor weigh in on that. Plus, Illegal migration surging with no signs of slowing down. There is border correspondent Jason Jones standing by his report moments away.